am Chad Vick, lead pastor of Free Worship in Sherrill, South Carolina, where we do church a little bit different. Join us as we go to a worship experience that's already in progress. Matthew chapter number 7, verse 1. The Bible says, judge not, somebody finish it for me, that you be not judged. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye? But do not notice the log that is in your own eye. Or how can you say to your brother, let me take that speck out of your eye when there is a log in your own eye? You hypocrite. Jesus' words. First take the log out of your own eye. And then you will clearly see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. You know, every person that has ever messed up in life knows this scripture. Wait a minute, wait. Every person that has ever messed up in life knows the beginning of the scripture. See, here's the deal. The world knows this scripture better than the church. Man. Pastor, what do you, how many times have you ever tried to call somebody out? How many times have you ever given one of those eyes to somebody and said, hold on, judge not. Lest you be judged. Am I the only one? No, no. You know what? The world knows this scripture much better than the church. Jesus was basically using this scripture. Just stay with me just a moment, standing. Listen, Jesus was using this scripture to tell us how to handle people's mess ups. Jesus was using this scripture not only to tell us how to handle people's mess ups. But I believe he used this scripture to teach us how to handle our own mess ups. Listen, there's not a day that's going to go by in your life that people are not going to let you down. Listen, you know why? Because every single day, everybody messes up. Well, let me reword that for you. Oh, you ain't going to like this. Listen, every single day, you mess up. Every single day, I mess up. And every day that we wake up with breath in our body, we have to make a determination. How am I going to handle somebody letting me down today? How am I going to handle my own mistakes and my own mess ups? Say, every day that you wake up, listen, you got to decide that because everybody messes up. Now, look at your name, that's a fact of life. Folks, and that is an absolute fact of life. But I don't know about you, but does it seem that people. Do dumber stuff as the days go by. No, nah, I mean, for real. Just stay with me. Stay standing. Is it just me or does it seem like as the days go by, people do dumber and d M Thank you. Maybe it's, because, maybe it's because with just a click of a button, I can tell 1,500 to 5,000 people somebody's messed up. Maybe with just a few clicks. See, when Grandma used to want to tell something on you, she had to call every single one of you individually. But now all you got to do, oh, y'all know, know. I knew you were going to be quiet on me today. That's okay. But listen, with just a few clicks, we can share somebody's mess up. Or, or with just a quick snap of a picture. Look at that old snap. I mean, with just a quick snap of a picture, we can let the world know where somebody has done messed up. I want to share with you a fact of life, and here's what I want to share with you. Watch this. This is the fact of life I want to share today. I want to share this. What goes around comes around. What goes around comes around. Look at that every time. Now, that's a fact of like, listen, what goes around, I don't know, but I feel like God woke me up one more day with some air in my lungs to let somebody know that what goes around will always come around. And I believe Jesus has a stiff warning to us, and I believe Jesus is trying to tell us, look, this is how you deal with it. This is how you deal with people that mess up and let you down. Look me in Matthew chapter 7, verse 1. I want you to stay standing to see this in the Message Bible. Watch this. The Message Bible says, don't pick on people. Jump on their failures, criticize their faults, unless, of course, you want the same 
treatment. That critical spirit has a way, watch this, that critical spirit has a way of boomerang. In other words, Jesus said what goes around, somebody say it, comes around. Now watch this. It's easy to see a smudge, come on, on your neighbor's face and be oblivious to the ugly sneer on your own. Do you have the nerve to say, let me wash your face for you when your own face is distorted by contempt? It's this whole traveling roadshow mentality all over again, playing a holier-than-thou part instead of just living your part. Watch this. Wipe that ugly sneer off your own face, and you might be fit to offer a washcloth. Oh, I love the Message Bible. You may just then be able to offer a washcloth to your neighbor. High five somebody around you and tell them what goes around comes around. You may be seated all over there. What goes around comes around. Now you understand why you got a smudge on your face. I told you it was scripture. Now you understand why we had you to place a smudge on your face. And here's why. Because number one, everybody has a smudge. Listen, there's not a person under the sound of my voice that has not messed up. There's not a person under the sound of my voice that has not made a boo-boo. There's not a person under the sound of my voice that has not made some crazy decision, some insane, crazy, messed up, jacked up choice in life. Let's just be honest. And, and everybody has a smudge. And the Bible says, why in the world would you call out the speck? This word speck in, in the KJV means sawdust. Why in the world would you call it that little speck on your neighbor's eye when Jesus said, man, you got a big old two by four sticking out the side of your head. I mean, Jesus said, man, you got this big old smudge across your face, but you're so concerned with the person sitting beside you and their smudge that is on their face. And so what I want you to understand to even get started on this message today is every single one of us have weaknesses. Every single single one of us have sins. Every single one of us have messed up and have faults of our own. Listen, if it's ever been my desire of free worship, it's to have a church where there ain't no pretending. I mean, to have a church where, where there ain't no holier-than-thou folks running around here acting like they live in a sin-free life. Look at them and tell me you at the right church. Listen, I mean, one of those places where you don't feel like you are the only one that showed up with smudge on your face. One of those places. Listen, because the Bible says in Romans 3 and 23 that every single solitary one of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Listen, I don't care how hard you try, you will fall short every single time. Now, some of you sitting here and you say, well, Pastor, I, okay, you know what? I, I, you got me. You got me. I admit it. I do sin, but not quite like they do. Welcome to free worship. Listen, because you're the one I want to preach to today. You, you're the exact one I need to speak to today. Number one, everybody got a smudge. Look at your name and tell me, everybody's got a smudge. I want y'all to work with me today. Number two, we got to deal with that smudge. Listen, the second thing is we have got to deal with that smudge. Or if I teach just a few moments, there, there, are, there are two types of, of people in this room. The, the Bible begins to describe to us two types of people in this world which are right here in this room or maybe watching by eye campus or watching by television. There are, there are two types of people. Listen, and you fall under one of two categories. Watch this. You either are an interceder or an accuser. Now watch this, whenever you see a smudge on somebody's face, whenever you see a mistake that somebody has made, whenever you see that somebody has messed up, listen, you, you do one of two things. Either you intercede or you begin to accuse. Now, now let's look at the two because I want to kind of describe it to you today. Maybe you can see which one you fall into. Maybe you even flip-flop between the two. Maybe there's sometimes that if, if it doesn't fall on your list of too bad, then you'll pray for them. Or, or maybe if it doesn't fall on your list of, of being all that bad of a sin, you, you, you'll intercede for them. But watch what the Bible says. The Bible says, For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. Listen, an accuser is one that wants to put somebody down. Listen, an accuser is somebody that wants to criticize. An accuser is one that wants to point out somebody else's issues. An accuser is that one that wants to look over to the neighbor and, and they got a bigger smudge on their face. And so you think if you point out their smudge, then maybe your smudge doesn't look quite as, oh, I better go on. Listen, an accuser is one that likes to likes to judge. But listen, here's what I want you to pull up real close. The ministry of Satan is to accuse people. Listen, the ministry of Satan is to be hard on people. Matter of fact, the Bible says that he is running his mouth 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right up there to God. Do you know anybody like that? 
Oh, I hope not. Listen, listen, then they become an accuser. And so if we're not careful, we'll find ourselves on one of two teams. If we're not careful, we'll find ourselves either on the team of the accuser or you're going to be on the team of the intercessor. Listen, you know, we, we think it's funny, but, you know, when you point out others' faults, listen, when, when you Facebook someone's fault or tweet someone's defeat, you're on Satan's team. Oh, no, nah, Pastor, I didn't see. I, I actually wasn't the one that typed it. I just saw it, and I kind of, like, hit, like, hit like share. And, and, and so, like, really, if you want to look into it, the one that really, now, you know what? You just, you just joined up on Satan's team. See, whenever, oh, listen, whenever you begin to run your mouth or, or talk about somebody else's smudge, you link up with Lucifer. Listen, when, whenever you decide that, that all of a sudden you have the right to talk about somebody else's issues, you begin to side with Satan. Listen, whenever you decide to talk about somebody's problems and issues, and I know, y'all think I got a beef, I don't. The Lord gave me this message three weeks ago. Listen, whenever you begin to do that, here's what you do. You deliver for the devil. Good God Almighty. Listen, and, and, and look, your name, that's a fact of life. But here's the fact of life. What goes around, whew, I know it's going to be tough today. What goes around comes around. But watch the difference. Watch the difference here. The Bible says in Isaiah 53 and 12 that he bore the sins of many and makes intercession for the transgressions. Romans 8 and 34 says, who is to condemn? Paul started out this letter writing to the Romans. He said, listen, which one of you have a right to talk about somebody else's smudge? Which one of you have the right to even begin to call out somebody else's issues? Who is to condemn? Watch, Jesus Christ is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God. Watch this, who indeed is interceding for us. Listen, if anybody ever had the right to condemn, it was Jesus Christ. If anyone ever had the right to hate on those that are sinning, watch this, it was Jesus Christ. If there's anybody that ought to be angry with sin, it is Jesus Christ. But yet, I find him in the Bible, says he's sitting up in heaven on the right hand of the Father, making intercession, guess what, for me and for you. He's sitting on the right hand of the Father, and he's pleading to the mercy seat to give you mercy. God, you are to get excited and to give you grace today somebody ought to say thank you the Bible says in Hebrews chapter number 7 and verse 25 he lives to make intercession for me listen watch this watch this let's let, watch this Jesus died for our mistakes he died for our sins he died for our failures he died for our smudges he died for our issues watch but yet he came back to life watch this he said God you got to raise me back up because I got to go sit upside the throne so that I can make intercession in other words he lives to make intercession for you and for me somebody ought to say thank you in the house today. let me ask you today when someone fails in life do you criticize or do you jump to help Let's just be honest. Church folk can be the nastiest. Somebody say, I know that's right. Listen, church folk can be the quickest to criticize. Church folk can be some of the quickest folks to want to pass. Ju- I just say it like it is. Church folk can be the quickest to want to run their mouth. Listen, you remember the woman caught in adultery, and I'm not going into it real deep because I done shared it with you a million, million times. It was a bunch of preachers that rode that woman up in there to Jesus, threw her down at Jesus' feet. The Bible said, called her in the very act, looked at Jesus and said, listen, she, she sinned, and the Bible says that she is to be put to death, but we come to see what in the world you are to say about that. Jesus, we want to know what you think. Do, do you think they were trying to help that woman that day? Or do you think they were there to kind of help hurt do, do you think those preachers that day were working for God or were those preachers that day working for the enemy? Listen, the spirit of accusation sets out to destroy. The spirit of accusation sets out to bring someone down. You, you, know, you know the story, and, and, and she, she put that, they put that lady before Jesus. And you know what Jesus looked down? I just want to paraphrase a little bit different today to get you to better understand what I believe we need to know for today. Jesus looked at, Jesus looked at said, y'all want to talk about sin? You guys that just brought this woman in here, okay, let's, I'm, I'm willing to talk about sin, but let's talk about your sin. You know what the Bible says? Everyone then began to back out. They dropped their stone right there where they were, and they began to back out. You ever notice we like to talk about somebody else's sin? Let's just don't talk about our own sin. They left the room, and watch this. Here's what I want you to say the whole story. Jesus looked up, and he said, where are your, watch this, accusers? Notice he didn't say, where are your interceders? Well, wait a minute. 
hold on, wait, wasn't that church folk that just brought that woman in here? Surely they brought her because, oh, they meant to bring her to the altar to intercede. No, the Bible says Jesus looked at him and said, where are your accusers? Where are your accusers? Where are your accusers? You know what Jesus said that day to her? He said, you know what? I'm not here to hurt you. I'm here to help you. Did he call it sin? You better believe he did. Yeah. He said, listen, go and sin no more. You know what Jesus really said? Let's start over. Don't you love that about it? He, lo- he said, you know what? I, yeah, you messed up. Yes, you got a smudge on your face. Yeah, yes, there's a lot of folks that could be critical about you. But you know what? Let, let's just start over. See, here's number three that I want to give you. Give me just a few more minutes. Listen, number three, you get to decide your judgment. Oh, watch this. You get to decide. Each one of us get to decide our own judgment. So, so watch this. Today, tomorrow, next week, you're deciding your own sentence. See, see I, I, I love to preach it. You know, I, you know I do. You get to decide your own blessings. But guess what? You get to decide your own judgment. The, the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shaken together, run up with the same measure that you give. God to give it back to you. Well, watch what he says about judgment. He says the exact same thing about judgment. Watch, watch what he says about giving out. He says, judge not that you be not judged. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Let me read you the message, Bible. Don't pick on people. Jump on their failures. Criticize their faults unless, of course, you want the same treatment. That critical spirit has a way of boomer, right? Look now and tell them what goes around comes around. What goes around. So, so here's the, you get to decide what goes on in your life. Listen, where you are right now in life, I bet you, is a direct result of how you treated somebody. I mean, I'm just giving you sh- Listen, how you dish it to others determines what you're going to be served. Are, are you fine? Listen, h- how you dip it determines what's going to be put on your. I knew it was going to be quiet in here today. Listen, listen. I, I just thought, who? The Romans start out. He said, man, who are you to condemn? Who are you to judge? Listen, guess what? You know, you know who you, you know who judges you? You know who judges you? You do. You get to judge you. So when God put this scripture on my heart, I thought, man, we better think long and, and we better think hard. Because we get to judge us based on, based on how we judge others. You see, here, here's it. We want judgment for you and mercy and grace for me. You, you know what we really like to do? When you sin, we like to say, shame on you. When, when, when I sin, I say, well, you know, we ain't everybody. Nobody can be perfect. You know what I mean? I, Jesus was, the, don't you judge, judge not lest you be judged. I mean, Jesus was, y'all know y'all do it. Jesus was the only one that was perfect. But watch this. Pull up really, really close. The same judgment you put is the same judgment you get. Oh, did you hear that? The same judgment that you put is the same judgment that you get. So, so let me put a little warning out to the church. If you want mercy, guess what? You better give out mercy. Listen, if you want grace, then you better let your judgment be done with somebody say it. Grace. Listen, if you want love, then guess what? You better be so careful to show love. Listen, if you want help when you fall, you better be willing to help when somebody else falls. Are you following what I'm tr- I'm trying to help? I'm trying to help me today. I'm trying to help you. In the- you remember the story of Noah? The story of Noah was over in Genesis, and, and I know you could all tell the story how, how Noah built this big old boat, and I could go into all that story, but I want to fast forward just a little bit, because the Bible says that, that Noah put eight people on that boat. He had three sons that he stuck on that boat. He, he, put, his, he put his little honeydew on the boat, and he himself got on the boat, and the Bible says that, that he loaded up that boat with, with two by two, every animal you could find. He put them up on that boat, but fast forward about probably two or three, I don't know how many years, several years later, Noah got off that boat and he walked out on dry ground and he decided to plant this vineyard. And the Bible says that Noah began to grow grapes. And the Bible says that Noah began to take those grapes and make some wine. And the Bible says that Noah began to sample the wine. The Bible says that Noah sampled the wine just a little, let past Chad Chad, Noah sampled the wine just a little bit too much. And the Bible says, I, I know, I know, I know didn't tell you this in Sunday school. All, you knew he built that boat and he got off of it. And my listen, Noah got drunk. 
the, the same Noah that God said in Genesis chapter 6 was this man that God had found favor in his sight. Several years later, after he got off the boat, you said, hey, you know what, several years later, I had planted some grapevines and I, four years ago, and I still ain't got a grape off of them. So I don't know, it might have been 10 years. And, I, I'm, I'm just saying. And, but, but according to this, Noah was able to grow enough grapes that he made some wine off of the grapes. And the Bible says that Noah got drunk. Now watch this. Not only this, but Noah took off his clothes and he passed out drunk and he was naked. Now, I'm, that's just Bible. That's just Scripture. And I'm just, it's just exactly what's in the Bible. But watch, watch this because this is what's really, really interesting. The Bible says that his son Ham found him. The Bible says that, according to the Bible, the Bible says that Ham exposed his nakedness. And, and let me just bring it up to today. In other words, Ham Instagrammed his dad. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, Ham went on and got on Facebook and said, man, I don't, y'all ain't going to believe this. Yeah, my daddy, the one that built that big old boat and saved all of us, he, he well, he's messed up right now. I mean, he tore up right right now, and they probably even threw a little picture up on Facebook. In other words, he, he tweeted his defeat of his dad where his other two brothers found out about it. And the Bible says they backed him backwards. They didn't want to see the disgrace of their dad. And they laid a, a cloth upon him. Now listen, the Bible doesn't tell us what happened to Noah for his drunkenness. Watch this because this is what's important. The, the Bible doesn't tell us exactly what took place with Noah and the drunkenness. But what the Bible does tell us is that because Ham was critical... Because Ham, expo because Ham ran his mouth, because Ham accused instead of interceded. Watch what the Bible says. The Bible says that Ham was cursed on the earth for life. Listen, how in the world am I going to talk about somebody else's smudge when I got mud on my face? Listen, the Bible says you better wipe your own face first. Listen, the Bible says, matter of fact, if you'll wipe your own face, then just possibly, maybe, you'll be able to hand a washcloth to wipe the person beside your face. In other words, the Bible says we need to quit judging people and start helping people. Who in the world died and left? You judge. You see, I'm afraid we've created this mentality of God that we believe that God is this person that's wanting to catch you in trouble. Listen, God is not, God's goal is not to catch you in trouble. God's goal is to help you when you are in trouble. God's goal is to come to your rescue. God's goal is to come right to watch what the Bible says. The Bible says in Romans 14 and 4, Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls. And he will be upheld for the Lord is able to make him stand. Romans 14 and 13 said, Therefore let us not pass judgment. On one another any longer, but rather decide never to put a stumbling block or hindrance in the way of a brother. Going down a little bit lower in verse number 19. So then let us pursue what makes for peace and for mutual upbuilding. You know what the Bible's saying? The Bible says, you know what the church ought to be doing? The church ought to be lifting one another up. The church ought to be a place that creates peace. The church ought to be a place. Listen, I want a ministry that goes after those that have fallen. Listen, I want a ministry that doesn't try and point out the, the bad but tries to pick up the bad. Listen. I'm praying for a ministry that doesn't try to lower the boom but tries to lift up. Are you following what I'm trying to say? I'm looking for those who are willing to love those who are fallen. I'm looking for those that are willing to restore those that have smudge on their face today. Watch this because what goes around comes around, and that's a fact of life. Every head bowed and every eye closed in this place today. Wow, the Bible is so strong. Jesus is warning. Jesus said this scripture, judge not, that you be not judged. With the same judgment that you pronounce, it'll be put on you. With the same measure that you use, it'll be measured on you. And the Bible says, it goes on to say, but you know what's the best thing to do? Notice that you have a smudge on your own face. Wipe that ugly sneer off your own face. Message Bible, verse 5. And you might be fit to offer a washcloth to your neighbor. Now, I don't know about you. But when God put this message on my heart some three weeks ago, it has totally changed the way I want to look at other people. This message radically changed how Chad Vick sees the smudge on somebody else's face. And so today, with every head bowed and every eye closed today, 
we placed wipes at the altar today. And each one of us today are going to have the opportunity to come to the altar and say, God, you know what? Here's my smudge. Here's where I have messed up. God, today this word really came front and center to my life. And you know what? I see the two before sticking out of my own eye. I see the smudge that is on my face. And today, I ask you to forgive me. Today, I ask you to wipe that smudge off, off my face. The Bible says if you confess before the Lord that he'll be faithful and just to forgive you. You know what he said? You know what he's really saying? He'll take that smudge off for you. He'll wipe that smudge right off of your face. And then, just then, maybe we'll be ready to be able to leave this place and offer the same cleansing, loving, washing power that he's offered us today. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I just wonder today, did it did the word resonate with anybody today? I, he promised me his word would not return void. God bless you. Thank you. Did it did it resonate? You know, it was so it's just easy. It's easy. It's human nature. It's human nature. Thank you. Thank you. And you. It's just human nature to look at somebody else and say, Honey, can you believe? And God says, you know what? Examine your own self. Look over your own face. Ask him to help you so that maybe you then can help others. One thing I refuse is for free worship to be a place that points fingers at those that are hurting. Listen, I refuse it. I refuse it. I refuse it. I refuse the leadership of this church to look at other people and say, can you believe them? I just want to say, nah, can you believe you? Can you believe me? The Bible says if he has to reach way down, Jesus will pick you up. The Bible says that you can make your bed in hell, and guess what? He's there to lift you up. I hope you enjoyed the word today. Be sure and set your DVR or tune in every Tuesday at 6 p.m. to this broadcast. You may be asking how you can help. You may want to know what your role could be in this ministry. We are looking for those that would partner with this television ministry to help spread the word. You want to help? Go online at www.freeworshipsheral.com or call the number that is on your screen and you can give today. If you get an opportunity to worship with us live, we're at 915 Chesterfield Highway, Sheral, South Carolina, 29520. Otherwise, we'll see you next Tuesday at 6 p.m.